Here we're going to be using the cost method to record treasury stock. First I'll give a overview of the treasury stock cost method and then we'll go through an example where we'd be repurchasing, reissuing, and then retiring treasury stock. Okay, this is an overview of the cost method to record treasury stock. Now the cost method is where we use the price per share or the cost per share of the common stock that was repurchased here as treasury stock. We use this cost to record both the repurchase of the treasury stock and also the reissuance of that treasury stock. And then our cash account, that gets increased or decreased for the actual amount of cash either received or uh, paid for that transaction. And then the balance would go to additional paid in capital for treasury stock. And that would be the difference between the treasury stock and the cash amount for that transaction. And then there's a rule here with the additional paid in capital. You cannot debit uh, your additional paid in capital for any more than the existing credit balance and addition paid in capital. So if you needed an additional debit amount here between your uh, cash and treasury stock balance, you would have to uh, debit or decrease your retained earnings for that amount. And remember, you can never credit or increase your retained earnings for any treasury stock transaction. So we recognize our gain and loss here for treasury stocks at the time of the reissuance or the sale of the treasury stock. And we recognize that gain or loss here in additional paid in capital. And then we would decrease our retained earnings if necessary for any additional amount that we need. All right, let's look at an example here for recording our treasury stock using the cost method. So when we buy back the shares, we would be increasing our treasury account here by the number of shares that we purchased times the cost per share or the price per share that we had to pay here when we repurchased the stock. Now that becomes our cost basis. That would be the cost that we're going to use on a per share basis when we reissue this stock. And then we would decrease our cash account here by, of course, the quantity that we repurchased times this cost basis, or that's the price that we actually had to pay per share when we repurchased the stock. When we reissue our treasury stock, we'd reduce our treasury stock account here by the number of shares issued times the cost basis per share. Now remember this cost basis is the price that we had to pay uh, per share here when we repurchased it. And then we, on our cash account here, we'd be increasing it by the number of shares issued times the issue price here per share or the selling price per share. Now remember here we're using the selling price or the issue price and not the cost basis. So the balancing amount between our treasury stock and our cash amount here would go to additional paid in capital here for treasury stock. And that would be the number of shares issued times the difference between our issue price minus our cost basis. So when we're looking at a gain, that would be where we our selling price was greater than our cost basis. We'd credit or reduce here our additional paid in capital account. And then where we're looking at a loss here, this is where our selling price is less than our cost basis. So we debit our additional paid in capital. And then the rule is you cannot debit this additional paid in capital account for any more than the existing credit balance. So when this additional paid in capital is exhausted, then the remaining um, balance would go to our retained earnings or debit or reduce our retained earnings. Now remember, you can never credit or increase retained earnings for any treasury stock transactions. Okay, let's look at retiring our treasury stock using the cost method. Now, when we're retiring our treasury stock, we're actually having to retire the common stock that's being held in this treasury stock account. So we have to determine what the common stock was originally issued at for its price and also its par value. So once we've determined that, we can take the number of shares times the par value here for our common stock and debit or decrease our common stock for that amount. And then here for additional paid in capital for common stock, we take the number of shares retired times the difference here between the issue price and its par value and we debit or decrease our additional paid in capital for that amount. And then for our treasury stock, we credit or be reduce that times the number of shares times the cost basis. Now remember this cost basis is what, is what the price we had to pay when we originally bought those shares back. And then the balancing amount here between 
our common stock accounts here and this treasury stock account would go to additional paid in capital for the treasury stock. So just looking at our example here where we had a um, $1,000 debit here in common stock plus this debit amount here of $1,500 and we got $2,500 debit amount here versus in this case we had a credit amount here of $2,800 in our treasury stock. So we need a $300 debiting amount here in additional paid in capital to treasury stock. But we can only debit this additional paid in capital to treasury stock up to any existing basis here in our credit, um, account, uh, credit side of the uh, additional paid in capital. So I just put down here we had a zero balance. So the difference uh, in this case is a loss and it has to go to debit our retained earnings or reduce our retained earnings by $300. The difference here between the $2,500 debit balance here for our common stock and that $2,800 credit balance here in our treasury stock. And just remember here, you can never uh, credit or increase retained earnings for any treasury stock transaction. So our balance uh, between in this uh, retirement here uh, between it had to be made here between our treasury our common stock accounts here and also our treasury stock accounts and the loss in this case was recognized here an additional paid in capital the treasury stock but we actually couldn't take it here because we had hit a zero balance so the loss was carried over here to reduce our retained earnings for that amount